Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, this lecture is the last theoretical lecture about uh, Apollonius problems. Um, it's basically titled Lines and Circles. Um, it's presented on the website unizor.com, this one. I suggest you to view this lecture, to watch this lecture from this website because it contains nice notes as well as just the general functionality of educational process which includes exams, um, enrolling, etc. So, <clears throat> um, as, as I was saying, this is the last theoretical lecture on Apollonius problems and uh, before actually going into lines and circles I would like to make a few comments about certain um, kind of obvious aspects of um, uh, transformation uh, which we are talking about. So, inversion. That's the main tool of all these problems um, encompassed by the name Apollonius. Um, so, this inversion, as I was presenting it, I was presenting in a relatively straightforward fashion. For instance, this is an inversion circle, uh, the center, and let's say if you have a line here, then you have to draw the perpendicular, draw the image of that point inside, and the image of that line would be a circle which has this segment as a diameter from a center to a point which is an image of this time, of this point. Now, I did not really go into more, well, more complex uh, situations um, like this, for instance. So instead of this line which is completely outside of the circle. What if the line intersects it? What happens in this case? Well, I didn't really touch it because it's really very simple thing. It's exactly the same. And as I was saying, the um, situation is uh, exactly the same. You, you take this point, you reflect it relative to this uh, inversion circle and in this case it would be point outside and again you construct a circle using this as a diameter exactly the same type of thing so the image of the line is still a circle even if the line intersects the in the inversion circle it's just the circle which would be partially in partially out as well as this line is partially in partially out now similarly if you have a circle which is partially in and partially outside so this is inversion circle and you have circle like this for instance what's the image well before we were talking about the image of a circle as a circle and i proved it but in this case again without the proof um, just uh, you have to do exactly the same thing have a diameter have these two points um, inverted so this one goes into let's say this and this one goes into let's say this now these two points which are on the inversion itself on the inversion circle itself should stay and the resulting circle would be this the image so again a circle goes into a circle without any problems and um, um, what else well if you have two lines If you have two lines, any lines, intersecting each other at one particular point, their image, whatever their image is, would also intersect, but the point would be I I inside. So, if this point belongs to this line, it belongs to, it, to, so image of this point belongs to image of this line, which is made to this, and the image of this line would be something like this, and again, the point will be the same. Intersection will be in one point. Therefore, um, if you, let's say, have a tangent to a circle, this is inversion, circle. You have a circle and a tangent. So the circle will be transformed into a circle, in this case inside this tangent would be transformed into 
a circle which goes through the center of the inversion but my point is there is one common point the tangential uh, the, the point of tangency so this circle whatever it is would be tangential to this circle so this tangential point and this tangential point they are um, inversed against each other because there is only one intersection if there is one intersection it cannot turn into no intersection or two intersections obviously it will be one intersection point um, among images um, and uh, if there is no intersection there will be no intersection and here is an interesting um, example which actually is quite educational as far as the, what inversion actually is. If you have two parallel lines, well, again, lines do not have anything in common, right? No common points. They are parallel, which means their image is supposed to be parallel, right? So the image of this line uh, would be, so we have to draw it perpendicular. The image of this point would be this. The image of that point would be somewhere here right so this line would transform into this circle which goes through a center of the inversion and this line will go also to a circle which goes through a center so what is it is it a common point no because if you remember in the very beginning of explaining what actual inversion is i said that all outside is converted into the inside except the center Center is not converted into anything, is not participating actually in the transformation. So that's why you can say that there is no such point actually. There is no intersection here, there is no common point because this is a center and center is completely outside of all the transformations. So outside, if you just take out this particular point from, from the inversion circle, there are no intersections between these two images of these two parallel lines because there is only one intersection in the center and center is not part of the picture there is no such point actually if you wish in this transformation and inversion so we still preserve the notion of no intersection no common points among these parallel lines and there is no par no common points among its inverted images okay after this preamble, <coughs> it's time to go to, again, relatively routine lines and circles problem. So I have, uh, well, all lines were considered in the, in, in the first lecture um, when it's basically a triangle, right? So you have to inscribe or, circumscri or circumscribe around triangle. Now, as far as... Um, uh, two lines and a circle. Okay, two lines and a circle. I will consider only one particular case. All other cases are similar. Now, the circle is somewhere here. So we need a circle which would be tangential to all three of them. Okay, how can we accomplish this? Well, if you remember, if instead of a circle I have a point it goes it should go through then I can use this point as a center of inversion have some kind of a big circle and these two lines would be inverted into circles and this since it goes through a center the one which we need to construct would be a line and the line would be tangential to two uh, images of these two lines which is two circles so basically you would have a circle and a circle and you have to draw a common uh, tangential line which is easy you know how to do that now here instead of a point we have a circle but there is a very simple technique which you can actually um, uh, transform this, prob this problem into the problem when the point actually is given here is the point let's say this is R1, this is R2. What if I will increase the radius R1 by the value of R2? Then it will go through this. It's a concentric circle. Right? Now, now this new 
circle, the bigger one, R1 plus R2, will go through the center of this, which is given. Now, what's the difference if I will draw the perpendicular here? That would also be R2, right? And this would be R2. So if I will shift this line down by R2, and this line, this direction, by R2, and R2 is known, what do I have? I have a point and two lines, and I can now know how to draw a circle which is tangential to two lines and go through this point, right? That's one of the previous problems. It's a point, line, and line. We know how to do that. And, uh, and once I've done that, I know the center. And if I know the center, obviously I know the radius because I will subtract from this R2 and draw a new circle which is radius, whatever the radius is. And incidentally, if you have two lines and a point, this problem, how to, to draw a circle which is uh, passing through this point and tangential, well, if you remember, we just draw an uh, angle bisector, pick any point, have a circle which is uh, tangential to these two lines by dropping two perpendiculars, and then we just stretched it. So this point is stretched to this one, then the radius will stretch to this one. So basically, it's a proportional thing, right? So you know this, you know this, and you know this, and that's why you can know this. This is the proportionality between these two similar triangles. This and this. Okay, so that's two lines and a circle. Okay, what if you have two circles and one line? So you have a circle which is supposed to be tangential to two circles and a line. Okay, what can we do here? Well, what actually we can do is very similar to the one to, to transformation we did before. Let's say the smaller is R1, this is R2, and this is R3. So, I will increase the radius of this unknown uh, circle by the smaller one, the R1. Now it passes through the center. Now this it's tangential to the circle of the radius R2 minus R1, right? And this will be tangential to this line, which is on the distance R1. And this is R1. So, we have reduced our problem to a slightly uh, simpler one. But you have a line, a point, and a circle point, line, circle. So you have line, point, and circle. And you have to draw a circle which is this. Now, here, obviously, since we know the point, we can use the inversion with the center here. So, what we'll do is This is my inversion circle with this center. Now this is supposed to be a straight line, right? This is supposed to be some kind of a circle. And the circle also is supposed to be some kind of a circle. So right now the problem after the inversion has been reduced to drawing, constructing a tangent to two given circles. One is image of this line. Well, actually, I was wrong. This is not a circle. Since this is a line, the image would be not just a circle, but a circle which goes through this point. 
So it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's still a circle, but that would be something like this. So this circle is image of this. This circle is image of this line. And this circle would be transformed into this tangent which we have to construct. All right? So again, tangent to two circles, and we know how to do that. So that's what? That's uh, line and two circles. <coughs> All right. So line and two circles we have reduced to line, circle, and point by reducing the radius, and then use the, tra uh, use the inversion to, to solve the problem of line, pointer, a line point and circle. Now the last one which we uh, did not touch yet, that's three circles. Now as I was given this problem, uh, construct a circle which is tangential to three given circle, circles. That was actually given me as a true Apollonius problem. I mean all others are kind of derived but this is original Apollonius problem. Construct a circle tangential to three given. So what can we do in this particular case? Well, actually, we can do a very simple thing. Again, let's take the smallest radius, which is this one. R1, R2, R3. And we will reduce everything by r1 so this would be a point this would be a circle of the radius r2 minus r1 right this is r1 and here also would be a, this is r1 would be a circle r3 minus r1 now so it, w what we have now is we have to construct a circle which is passing through this point and tangential to two circles. This, this, and this is the point. So this is a point circle circle problem, which we have considered in the previous lecture when we were talking about points and circles. Again, you just use this point to the center of inversion and uh, these two circles would be converted into, transformed into circles and the circle which we need would be their tangent, t tangential line. Um, so basically that's it. That's the solution. So with inversion it seems like very easy. As long as you know how to invert a point to a point, a line to a circle, a, and the circle to a circle, if you know that, how to do it, and it's very simple actually, then basically that's it. All problems are resolved. Now, the last problem, which is kind of a combination, we touched before. If you have a point, a line, and a circle, we already touched it in the previous problem. We have reduced the two lines and the circle, no, uh, two circles and a line. Yeah, two circles and a line, we have reduced to this one. All right, so as long as you have a point, the easiest way is just to draw a circle uh, around this point as a center and invert everything um, uh, 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 relative to this circle. So these are all different problems combined together under a general name Apollonius problems. It's constructing a circle which is tangential to three elements and three elements can be anything points, lines and, and, and circles. Um, one more uh, important issue. You know, these solutions, whichever I was suggesting to you, I suggested just one solution. But in probably almost every case, there are more than one solution. So if you are really, like, scientifically approach all these problems, you really have to specify what kind of solutions really exist. And let me just, as an example, uh, talk about the last one. So, if you have a circle which is supposed to be tangential to three given circles, how many solutions this problem has? Well, this is one. Now, this is another. Right? This is the third one. 
There are many, many circles <coughs> using the combinatorics we can actually calculate because each circle can be um, tangential either inside or outside, right? This is outside tangency and this is inside tangency. So basically, I think we have eight different solutions here. Two for this, two for this, two for this, because each one of these three given circles can be either inside or outside touching the, uh, the circle which we need. So eight different solutions. And um, how can we obtain this? Well, let me just tell it on this particular uh, example. If you use uh, first, you have to reduce the problem to the problem of two circles and the point by reducing all radiuses to the radius of the smaller one, right? So, now this is the center, so you draw a, a inversion circle, this would be a line, uh, this would be, cir circle would be in the circle, this circle would be another circle. Now we have two solutions, right? Two different tangential lines which are tangential to this one. At the same time, you can use actually different type of um, uh, different types uh, of uh, center. You can use instead of this center, you can use some other, you have three different versions for, for the center of inversion. And in all these three different versions, situation would be different, obviously. And you will have different pictures, different uh, uh, different circles and different tangents. So that's why you have certain freedom of choice and whenever you exhaust all these um, uh, variations that would be basically the, the result of everything. Right? So, like, for instance, we are looking for let me just give you an example. If you have again, this and you have to this, get this solution. What happens? Now, in this case, in this case, what should you do? <coughs> well, you reduce your radius, that would be something like this, this, and the point, right? So it would be tangential here, here, and here. That's what you're looking for, right? That's what you're looking for. Now, if you will use this as a center, this as a center, then this would be circle, this would be another circle, and you have you have two solutions here, one solution and two solutions. One would correspond this circle and another would correspond to this circle, right? So basically again, all different variations are possible. And uh, if you, again, if you would like to really make a complete solution, you really have to think about all the different um, variations of this problem. But to tell you the truth, the most important, I would say, and the most kind of uh, interesting part is just to solve it in at least one case, like the case when everything is outside. I mean, that's kind of appealing to my eye. And, uh, and basically everything else follows. So you don't really have to, you know, struggle with this too much. What's important is that there is a very important there is a very powerful tool. There is inversion. This is a tool. And you have to really master this tool. You have to understand how it works and where it can be applied. And, well, what another probably more philosophical side of this is, if you will try to solve this problem without the apparatus of inversion, it would be probably difficult. Quite, 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 quite frankly, I just don't know how to solve this problem any other way or I didn't think maybe enough for this, but right now, at the moment, inversion is the only method which I know. I mean, probably there are some others. But what's important is that in some cases, 
whenever you are dealing with a difficult problem which you don't really know how to approach using known to you methods what's important is to go completely outside of the box and think about this problem from different perspective I mean somebody invented this particular transformation of inversion I don't even know who by the way but whoever did it it was really a perfect example of thinking outside of the box um, all these uh, mm, uh, approaches which were used uh, before like for instance you want to inscribe a circle into a triangle so basically tangential to three lines well you know how to do it it's angle bisectors etc now these are all classical approaches to construction problem using inversion basically inventing the inversion proving a few theorems that the lines would be converted into uh, circles during this transformation and, or, or circles which go through the center would go into a line etc so all these it's, it's a theory it's the whole apparatus which was built uh, maybe for some other purposes but for this particular purposes of Apollonius problems that was very useful and that happens a lot in science in, in theories etc in many cases when you just if you construct some uh, I don't know airplane air, airplane engine all right <coughs> with the propeller well propeller is uh, an engine definitely and it can be improved 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 but there is certain limit beyond which you cannot go and jets were invented as a completely new type of uh, of engine completely outside of the box and they actually made the whole um, uh, flying significantly faster so you have to think about certain problems which have reached either their level of uh, uh, understanding uh, level of capacity etc you have to think about them completely outside of the box and maybe you will come up with a completely new approach from completely different um, uh, direction which would be great for this particular kind, kind of thing. So this is a perfect example. Inversion is a perfect example of such, a, such an approach in, in mathematics. And whoever invented it was definitely a very talented person. Thanks very much and good luck.